I found a lot of neat artifacts over the weekend and I made more progress on the electric guitar and my brother Scott left with his guitar that he built and I think we have a clip or two of that. We'll tell you about all of that and even a gift that we received right after this. friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. It is Monday, January 9th. I'm going to have a busy day today because I'm going to have to dedicate pretty much the whole day to building mandolin saddles. I'm behind on those orders, so if you're looking for yours, it hasn't shipped yet if you ordered it late last week. Sorry about that, but I got to get them made. So I'll be dedicating the day to making those. I told you we received a gift. Speaking of deer antler saddles, here's some deer antler. I don't know who harvested them, but I knew, know who sent them to me. His name was Michael B. and he is from uh, South Carolina. So thank you, Michael. I appreciate it very much. If you all have deer antler and you don't have a use for them, I can always use them here in the shop. I would appreciate it very much if you could send them to me. If uh, money is an object, uh, if it's a problem uh, with the postage or whatever, let me know and I'll be glad to reimburse you for that. But I do appreciate it very much, Michael. Thank you very much. He also sent me this. And it's a combination five-in-one hammer. It's a hammer, and I think it's got uh, four different screwdrivers on it, which is kind of cool. I can keep this in my little Ranger, uh, my little outdoor uh, vehicle. And, uh, you know, whenever you need a screwdriver or something, well, then this thing will be handy for that. Thank you very much. Well, here's the status of the electric guitar. You know, the color match may not be perfect, I don't know, and you know, the wood match, the grain is even more difficult to match in this case. I had to match it with the wood I had that was big enough to fit the hole. <laughs> so, that's what I that's what you get when sometimes when you know, if you don't have the right thing, but it's uh, looking pretty good, got the finish on it. So I think we're about ready to finish this baby up today, hopefully. Uh, I'm not sure I'll get to it today because of having to build the saddles. My friends, it's Saturday afternoon and Scott's about to uh, take off. He's done all the work on his guitar. He's had his uh, bridge glued on here for almost an hour now. And uh, he's got his guitar pretty well finished. And how many days did you work on it now? Is it is yeah, this? 13. Thir including the uh, well including the inlay. the inlay and everything he's worked on it about 13 days something like that I came down here last Saturday he came down here last Saturday and today's Saturday so he's been here a week it's looking good very nice guitar it's, I'm calling it an instant guitar you know you, you come here and you leave with a guitar <laughs> nothing to it really there's absolutely nothing to it <laughs> he worked some very long hours on it sorry we can't play it for you right now but uh, he will eventually bring it back down here and play it for you I think he's about ready to head home and uh, I just wanted to show you uh, the status of it before he did that probably won't be able to play it till tomorrow since he's just glued the bridge on it today but it's a pretty guitar. It's going to be a really nice one. I'm sure it'll be a boomer. I mentioned that I found some pretty neat stuff with the metal detector back there. Before I show you that, I'll tell you that I also discovered uh, a better place to look on the one old homestead. If you recall, I have two different house places back there that we're searching. One of them is, uh, has a rock wall embedded in the ground there on the hillside. The other one is above the pond. Well, the one with the rock wall, I had never looked down the hill out in the open field. It's really grown up with weeds and everything. It's very hard to, to detect in there. But I ran the metal detector through the, this uh, weekend and it's loaded. So it's possible that where I've been detecting, thinking it was the house, that may have been the barn and things behind the house. And the house is down front. I'm finding all kinds of shotgun shell head stamps, which indicates to me that's where the house was because when you find that many concentrated, 
they're literally shooting out their window, shooting out the, shooting off the front porch, that kind of thing. So uh, that's the way the old timers did it the Oz in the Ozarks. How do I know that? Because my great grandparents and my uh, great uncle, they did that kind of thing. I mean, it was just common, you know, just normal. They'd be sitting there on the front porch in your easy chair, rocket chair, have your shotgun leaned up against the uh, wall next to you, just in case some critter, varmint, whatever came in the. And they would shoot everything, you know, like they'd shoot a hawk or anything. I, I wouldn't do that, of course, but they would do that back then. They, it, you know, they would consider a hawk a real bad predator varmint that would get their chickens and things, so they would shoot those. They'd shoot anything they saw that they didn't like. <laughs> That's just the way it was. You can't change history. And I think I'll just turn the camera down here and show it to you because I think it'll be easier. On Saturday afternoon, I found these. Now this is a really deteriorated shotgun head stamp. I imagine this is really old, but it's very brittle falling apart. So I haven't been able to get anything off of it yet. Don't know if I can. This one's another one that's really old, I think. This one I know about how old it is. It's definitely late 1800s, early 1900s, because I found a lot of these. It's called uh, UMC is the maker, and it says New Club on the bottom. And it's a 12, uh, no, this one's actually a 10 gauge, I think. And, yeah, I started finding 10 gauge this weekend, which I had never found before. I found, I think, three 10 gauges. Yeah, this is a 10 gauge, which is kind of rare because you don't see that many of those, at least not on this site. 10 gauge, uh, if you don't know, is a bigger shotgun than 12 gauge. I found a 1919 uh, Penny. Pr prior to that, I had only found a 1927, so at least we are getting a little older there, 1919. This is a rivet with some leather. I do not know what this is. It looks like it broke off of something and maybe this screwed in. I don't know. It looks pretty old to me. I don't know what it is. It's pretty small as you can see compared to my fingers there. This is kind of uh, in between. This is kind of a modern uh, bullet shape like a 22 bullet but you can tell it's very old because of the white patina on the lead. These over here are modern, more or less modern bullets, though this one may be fairly old. I haven't gotten the information off of it yet, but this is just the uh, modern bullet with the, with the uh, copper jacket on it. And this is a piece of copper jacket shrapnel, I think. Then you see here I've got four metal buttons. I found them right in the same uh, general area within a 10 square feet area, like if you drew 10 feet by 10 feet by 10 feet, so 100, 100 square feet. I have a feeling someone lost a shirt or a blouse and it just rotted away over time because these are metal buttons and they're pretty old, I think. I would say at least 1920-ish or earlier. And then we found more uh, evidence of uh, shooting with the round balls here. And then here's, a, here's another small round ball pistol ball. And that's pretty much everything I found here. This again is something I can't describe either. And I don't know if it goes to this because they look about the same kind of thing, similar look. I'm wondering if this wasn't even a gun cleaning thing. I really don't know what it is. But this kind of looks like a bullet that got crushed but it's got a kind of a silver jacket on it. So it might have been a 22 shell, a silver 22 shell or something. I don't know if that's a thing. That's kind of what that looks like, but this here, I don't know what that is. Okay, well that was all the stuff I found on Sunday afternoon. Here's the stuff I found yesterday afternoon. And I'll save the best for last. Again, I found uh, I think two or three, these are the smaller 12 gauge. So I found two 12 gauge shells and I found three 10 gauge shells. This one here, curiously, had been flared out on the end. I don't know why they did that or how that happened. Maybe it just got crushed in the ground with equipment or something and it just happened that way. I don't know. But uh, anyway, I have to look these up, these 10 gauges, to see how old they are. I don't know yet. 
I found one more button from those same buttons and I found it in the same location. Then I thought this was another heel plate. It's a nickel silver though. I can see the, the silver plating on it or nickel on it or whatever that is. It's probably a nickel actually plating. But then I, after I got to analyzing it, I see how it's folded over here, and I think this is a spoon that has gotten crushed and flattened out, probably when the bulldozers came through. Uh, so the handle would have attached right here, pulled out this way, and then this just got flattened, flat as a pancake, probably under the weight of a bulldozer, more than likely. Pretty sure that's a spoon, especially with the nickel silver on there and all that that I can see. Then I just found a rivet. Uh, I thought this might be copper, and it still might be. But uh, anyway, that's just a rivet. And then I found some more uh, lead for uh, shooting again. Uh, very old because of the white patina again. Then uh, this piece of nondescript metal. I do not know what this is. I don't know if it's, it doesn't feel heavy enough to be lead. I'm thinking it might be melted aluminum or something. I really don't know what that is. Lastly, found this little piece. I think this is probably off of a relatively modern tractor or truck, you know, probably from the 30s or 40s or something like that, maybe. I don't know. Just guessing. Then I found the obligatory harmonica reeds. You just find these things everywhere. And I mean, you really do find them everywhere. It's amazing how many of those you find. And then lastly, and this is probably the best piece. This one's even more corroded than the last one, but it looks almost identical. I haven't actually compared it yet to the first Van, uh, Fitch Van Vecht uh, bullet I found, which was made in 1864 to 1865. Again, you can see this is not a center fire. This is a rim fire, and you can it looks like the looks like the rim was struck right there. That's what it looks like. Anyway, it's been fired, I'm sure. You can see how old it is. It's kind of brittle and crushed. I'm gonna just take this brass brush here and just clean this bottom off a little bit more. I've washed them off with a soft brush already, but. I still don't see a thing. I don't even see the hint of any writing, but then the other one's pretty hard to see too. I mean, in fact, it's crazy hard to see. It took me about an hour to actually get the letters off the first one. This one looks like it's even gonna be more difficult than that. But anyway, I'm pretty sure it's the exact same thing. So my friends, uh, I'm still finding plenty of things back there. Even where I can detect, it's still real brushy-like, uh, stubby-like. There's stuff, you know, because I cut it with a brush hog type machine. People call them bush hog, whatever. We've always called it brush hog. Anyway, this stubble is about this tall and it's uh, most of it's as big around as my thumb. So it's hard to swing the metal detector. So once we get all that cleaned up and, uh, you know, maybe get it more like grass growing there, there's no telling what we might find because it's really hard to, to swing it. And especially out there in the front of that new location that I was mentioning, the weeds there are waist high and kind of fallen over. But I, before I can even cut the weeds, there's a couple of treetops laying in there that need to be cut up for firewood. So I need to go in there and cut that up first. So I got my work cut out for me, no pun intended. <laughs> As I mentioned already, today's gonna to be occupied with making saddles, so there will be very little progress on uh, working on instruments. But I do have a very, very interesting guitar that I'll be working on tomorrow, or that I will get down and show you what my next project is. So be sure to tune in tomorrow to see this very unique and very old guitar. Thanks so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you would. I think we're about to cross the 85,000 mark uh, subscribers if we haven't done it already. I didn't check this morning, but last night we were very close. So thank you for the new subscribers. Uh, if you are new, I hope you'll check out my more than 1,200 videos that are out there on YouTube. There's a lot of them to look through. We'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, yeah.